Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle and today I want to share with you our family's group subjects, what we do as a family. So if you're new here, I have an eight-year-old daughter and a four-year-old daughter and a one-and-a-half-year-old son. My eight-year-old daughter will be entering third grade this year. We have decided to homeschool and my four-year-old daughter has a fall birthday, so she's kind of a hybrid kindergartner. Now my kindergartner isn't required to join us for most of these subjects but she usually does like 95% of the time because she really enjoys it. So let's start with every morning we come together before they go off and do their individual subjects and do a couple things just for fun. I'll usually pick two or three things. So one of them is these I heard your feelings and they're just simple social emotional cards, discussion cards. So you get a picture and you discuss what's going on in the picture with your kids and it has questions on the back to further that discussion. And I think it's just a good way to come together and talk about social emotional stuff. And then we have some things for fun. Animal trivia. Again, this is from my Usborne haul. I'll link it up above. I also picked up the joke books. And again, we don't do every one of these every day. My daughter really likes Dyer from Wimpy Kids, so we do the Mad Libs. And it's, Mad Libs are an awesome way to Practice things like adjectives, nouns, all that So, And then I will always read a couple pages out of this. I also have the third grade version. I really like the idea that the more information your child is exposed to, the better. They don't have to necessarily understand every depth of it, but a, just a broad exposure to information will help them grasp those concepts later. So again, this covers Literature, art, geography, music, science, and I, I don't do the math in here, and I don't do the history, so I skip over those parts. But we're starting with the kindergartner version because, like I said, my four-year-old daughter is a hybrid kindergartner, so once we finish going through this book, we will start the third grade one. But I think it's just a great overall covering your basics, and every day we do once a couple pages of one section. So Mondays we do a couple poetry, Tuesday we do a couple pages in, you know, science or whatever we're doing for that time. So, and again, so what it usually looks like is I'll read a couple pages of whatever section we're on and I'll pick one of the other things. We will do a Mad Lib or a joke or some of them. Sometimes we play educational games, so I just grab a couple that we do. Just something fun to get us in the right state of mind for learning. So we'll start that in the morning. And then we have two main curriculums, or I guess three main areas we're working on. So we are doing exploring nature with children with our homeschool co-op. And then you guys have seen on my channel, if you've been watching any of my videos, the little Justice Leaders subscription box. It's a social justice themed subscription box for kids. You get a book, activity, some kind of craft project, some kind of art. And I've really enjoyed it. Again, I'll link up some of the reviews I've done, but we do this once a week on Fridays. And I've really been enjoying it. If you're curious, check out those videos. And then, so for our main electives, some of the things we're just doing. I went with Torchlight Level 2 Logic and Legends. Now I looked at Torchlight Level 1, and honestly my daughter had read most of the books that are recommended for, at least the literature ones, some of the science ones too. And we covered ancient civilizations last year, so this one specifically goes over the Middle Ages. So I thought it would be a fun, and again, we do this, we do this for fun. These are our fun subjects, so we get our math and our reading and our writing done right away in the morning, and then in the afternoon we go through this. I do not use every aspect of this, and if you want a complete review of my thoughts on the program, we've been using it about three weeks now. I'll be happy to make that review. But So for example, there are different areas this curriculum covers. Let's start with um, logic. So, so there are logic games that were recommended for it, and these look really fun. We have not dived into these. We're doing it this week, actually. So logic games, one of the things I really liked about this, two truths and a lie. There's two different versions, history, and then just plants, animals type things. 
but your reader is given three different small articles or stories within it. Obviously, like the name implies, two of them are true and one of them are false. And what I really like about that idea is it teaches kids, comes with a how you evaluate articles or things you read. I think that critical thinking and being able to look at something, look where the resources are coming from, what information they're citing from it, and being able to tell if that's truthful or if it's just a bias that the author is trying to convince you of. I think this is something that really needs to be taught, especially, I remember reading that most of their people get their information and news from Facebook right now, which is a disturbing thought. So I want my daughter to be able to look at documents, articles, and be able to look at it with that lens and say, okay, is this accurate? Or is this author just trying to convince me of something? And it goes, I really like these. We've done two of them so far. And we've been really enjoying it. She gets to learn how to research things, how to, obviously with me there, safely navigate the internet, what resources are good resources you know are we looking at scientific resources or are we just looking at someone making something up so she's learning those skills right now which i think is amazing i'm not sure why that isn't taught more so that's the logic end of things the literature i've really been enjoying we are going through this and again i just do the literature part as our read aloud so we, my, both my kids really are enjoying this, the literature suggestions. I've heard Torchlight has a lot more diversity in them, which I really like, but awesome picks. Can't say anything bad about that. There's these little short things. I think one of them is a comic books. Uh, you write your own comic book. And just different books that get your child to do some writing exercises, but in a fun way. To go with that literature, you got medieval time stories. There's some poetry that you do, which is really fun. Some other areas it covers is art and music. So we are currently doing some music studies, which again, this isn't overly complicated. It's a few pages. We list, and with music, obviously, we listen to a lot of it. A lot, most of these books are at my local library. I did obviously purchase the ones I'll be using the most. But you can take what you want from it and use it. You don't have to use the whole curriculum as it is and how it's written. So for example, the science it calls for in Torchlight is Real Science Odyssey, which is a fine um, program, but looking at what they recommended was earth and environment, and we spent the entire summer learning about geology specifically. So a lot of the topics that were gonna be covered in it, we've already gone through. So I wanted to go with something else. On top of that, I also wanted to be mindful that we are homeschooling this year, but that might not always be our choice. So I want to make sure my daughter is prepared if she chooses to re-enter the public school system. So that being said, I did look at the state standards of education for my state, what is recommended for this year, third grade specifically, and I actually went with core knowledge, which there's some papers in there, which I think is not used enough, especially in the homeschool community. I know it has a idea that it's a public school curriculum and that makes people like now core, or um, was it common core? No, I don't want any of that. But I really like how this is written. It's very discussion-based. It's very critical thinking and deep thinking. What I really like about it is it's age appropriate. So, you know, my daughter can read these sections by herself. It's laid out in a very logical way. And like I said, it's a lot of discussion-based. The experiments or demonstrations really are super easy, supplies you'll have on hand, things that make sense. So these are specifically the topics. I got the first two, which was investigating forces and life cycles, traits, and variations. And what I do is I buy the student readers and then I just look at the teacher guides because if you didn't know, their entire curriculum is online for free, all of it. 
So I just buy the student readers to have, so my child has something to read while we're going on. And these were only, I think, like $8. That's it, $8 a piece. <laughs> so we'll go through it, she'll have this, and it's, it's, it's been working really good. So we did that, and then for, there is geography in Torchlight, but it's, in my opinion, not done well, and it's just more busy work. So instead, I switched that out with basic geography skills. So for example, my eight-year-old going to third grade. So she hasn't really been taught anything about geography, how to read a map, states, continents, nothing has ever, none of that has been covered in the public schools. So for that, I started core knowledge. I started at the kindergarten level. And we are gonna go from there, kindergarten, and then I'll, the next one is first grade, second grade, third grade because she's missing that basic knowledge, I started at a much younger thing. I do the same thing here. This is the reader. And I just download for free the teacher guide and we go through and again, it's very discussion based. Pull out a map, use it. So it's quick, makes sense and it's easy. One thing I do use to supplement the core knowledge science is I rotate between three different video supplements Magic School Bus, awesome option. Bill Nye, the science guy for all of you 90s kids, awesome option. And then the updated version of that, which is I believe called Generation Genius. I'll link it down below. But they have some, it literally reminds me of Bill Nye, just updated some videos. And you can have, I think, watch five of them for free before having to buy a subscription. But obviously Bill Nye and Magic School Bus, there's streaming devices, library, we don't actually pay for any of those services. So I think that has been working really well. What do we do for G or geography, for history? Like I said, we're doing the Middle Ages and that encompasses a lot of different things, which I appreciate. So your main spine is Curiosity Chronicles. And what I do with this is I have the audiobook, so it's one less thing I have to read. And you only read or read or listen to the chapter once a week, and that's it. I did buy the <sighs> teacher's guide for it when I bought it, and I did that for one main reason, which was I really like the comprehension questions that for every chapter, so after we listen to it, I'll go over the comprehension questions, and then what do you think questions, which I think are really good. And it gives, you know, people in the chapter, a list of the people in the chapter, places in the chapter. So an overview, in case you're not sure about anything, obviously gives you uh, reading suggestions, so books to take out. And then there's hands-on acti ha hands activities. So for example, the hands-on activity for the chapter we just did, we made a flag to represent themselves. because. That's what kings would do. They'd have flags or knights. They'd have flags that would represent, you know that was them by seeing the flag. So we designed our own flags using the symbols that they would have used or the colors they would have used based on what they wanted people to know about them. So it was just fun to supplement that too. I also bought the core knowledge medieval Europe. And again, what I really like about this is it's, on par for where the child is. Now this is the fourth grade, which my child has no issue reading at all, but it really breaks it down nicely. And it's not long chapters. And again, like this other core knowledge stuff I use, this is just the reader. You can download the teacher guy and go even farther. They have writing activities, they have other reading suggestions, videos. One thing I really like about core knowledge, if you didn't know, they also have online resources. So videos, and it's listed by each chapter. So there's one for history, there's one for science, there's one for geography, and it's listed by each chapter. So it makes it super easy to teach. You go to the chapter, you see the online resources. Sometimes they're pictures, sometimes they're videos, sometimes they're YouTube song videos. Like it's really helpful and again, it's free. All that information is laid out for you, it's done for you. You can pick and choose what you want. It's worked really well for us. So that's the main spine. Again, we only do that once. We only read the chapter once um, 
a week. But there's a lot of supplements that go with it. So I did pick this up. This is not necessarily a book you need, but again, I got in that Osborne haul. It just goes over basic medieval stuff. What I really like about Curiosity Chronicles is that it doesn't just cover Europe. Most of the Middle Ages, at least the education I got, was very just focused on what was going on in Europe. Well, this curriculum tackles different places in the world, what's going on during that time. So there's a project book that you can get and it gives you a bunch of different ideas of stuff and Torchlight will specifically tell you um, when to reference this. There's information in here, not just projects. So sometimes you'll just be reading out of it. Sometimes you'll do the projects. So for example, the last one we did was we made a medieval house and we built it out of Lincoln logs and then we used materials we had outside to make the roof and then we got to test it to see if we made a stable enough roof and if it would actually keep water out. So that was fun. So we really liked that. One of the books recommended, I mean, it's only in the first two weeks, so again, library. But it just goes over jobs and what it was like to be part of that job and do that job for a living. Give you a quick view of some of these books that go with it. This one my kids have really liked and just randomly flipped through a lot. And then I found this at Costco actually. And it comes with, it's a book, but it also comes with activities. So it's pretty big. It goes over different things. And you'll see in some of them, there's a little symbol that there's an activity that you can do because in the back, in this big section here, is all like sturdy cardboard cutouts so you can make different things. So I'll show you guys real quick. This is the project we will be working on this week is we're going to make our own shield. And there's a castle and different things in there. And again, it's pretty sturdy cardboard. So this is your shield and you get to use the cutouts here. And you can punch them out and use them as stencils or just glue them the way you want them. And it'll just be a fun activity. And like I said, there's 89 model pieces in here so we're gonna just have fun with that but that is pretty much what we're doing and it might seem like a lot but again most of these books you're reading just a couple pages out of so it doesn't seem like that much and it's for fun I'm not looking for my kids to be able to recite dates or even specific what this person did just a general overview is what i'm looking for and that's doing a wonderful job of this it's just exposing them to tidbits here and there so they can better grasp it in the big picture so if you have any questions about anything or you'd like to see more of something leave them in the comments below but thanks for watching